Hi guys, um, we've just finished making a, an installation video on the Samba trim, which I think will be uh, useful to a lot of you guys, and it will show you things that we can't put in writing really, so videos, uh, videos are a much better way. So here we go, what you're going to need, I'll just run by the tools first, you're going to need one of these fellas, not necessarily quite as big as that one, but you'll see when the video is playing why, why you need it. Um, and then we've got various tools here in front of us. You definitely need a little square, a pair of compasses, a compass or dividers, uh, a scriber, pencil, five mil drill bit, uh, a posi drive. We're using posi drive screws, so a posi drive screwdriver is a one by eighty posi drive screwdriver. Hacksaw with a finish uh, TPI. I've got 18 threads per inch on that blade. Cuts the aluminium just nicely. And uh, a file or a couple of files if you've got them. A, a round rat tail file and an ordinary flat, flat um, file there. Roll the masking tape and then you're going to need an electric drill. Um, we've got this one here set up with a 2.5mm drill bit. We run that in a smaller chuck inside the larger one because you tend to find that those small drill bits will rotate in the standard chuck. So that's a handy little thing. You can buy these online for £10 or so. Not that expensive and it's a quick way of clamping small but drill bits easily. I've also got another drill set up um, which I've got a, 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 an 8 millimeter, an 8 mil diameter drill, uh, countersink tool which um, you may or may not want to do. It's, if you've got the time, you're not in a hurry, I would suggest you, you countersink uh, the screws. But that's, you'll see in the video, it's at the end of the deal. A couple of things to take on board is, I get asked a lot, can the trim be fitted after the car is painted? And the answer is yes, it can. And in fact, out of all the buses I've built, the one you're about to see is the only one that we've fitted before the car is painted. But obviously it makes sense if you've got time in your schedule to fit the trim before it's painted, then if you do scratch anything or mark with the primer, it's not going to be the end of the world. If you do do it on a painted, if you do the installation on a painted car, you're going to want plenty of masking tape and, and, and uh, be very, very careful. It's the sort of thing ideally you want to have done at least once before you do, do a painted one, but it is possible. The most important thing about fitting the Samba trim, whether it, your bus is in primer or paint, is that the doors must be hung and latched and gapped perfectly. You cannot install this trim on doors that are just chucked into the body and are not lined up. That original body moulding that runs all the way around the car needs to be perfect with all the doors. You'll just be onto a loser and you'll be wasting your money and time if you don't do that first. So that's the number one most important thing. Um, that's, that's about it. We're going to do a second video in, in a month or so's time when we got, get the car that you can see back from the paint shop. We'll put the trim back on, we'll fit the end caps and do the plastic infill. But this video will give you the, the information to actually get on and do it. So hope it makes sense and uh, you have some fun. When fitting our trim, it is vital that you start at the front door. This is because the location of the front door trim is determined by the front door's top hinge. The position of all the remaining trims are also determined by the location of the front door trim. Although we pre-curve the front door trim, it's worth giving it a final massage to suit your own door. As you can see, this is achieved quickly and easily by gently rolling the trim over your knee. It should only take you a few seconds to achieve a perfect fit. Although the screws would pull the trim to the door, it's good practice to get a snug fit without the screws. It's better to undercurve it three times than overcurve it once. We are initially going to use four screws, spacing them approximately equal distance apart. When you're happy with the fit, use a 2.5mm drill bit to drill and secure the trim against the top door hinge. As with all the holes you're going to drill, 
try and center the 2.5 millimeter drill in the center of the 5 millimeter punched hole. This helps with the alignment and allows the screw to self center and sit as low as possible in the trim. Before you drill the second hole, check and mark the desired trim position using your dividers and a pencil and make sure the trim is parallel to the body moulding. Check the measurement again carefully before drilling the hole. Be aware of secondary reinforcing that you may well have to drill through in addition to the outer skin. Secure the trim with a second screw. Working from the back of the door, check your spacing is correct. Drill and install the third screw. Now check the alignment along the entire trim. Mark your level. Check again. And now drill through the last screw hole in the trim. before inserting the screw and tighten. You can now fit the B-post trim. Use the dividers and the pencil to mark its position relative to the front door. Be sure to place it centrally on the B-post. You should have approximately 2mm at each end of the B-post trim, which will later accommodate two end caps. With the cargo doors latched closed, use the dividers and the pencil to mark the position of the front cargo door trim relative to the B-post and the front door trim. Drill and secure, installing two end caps. Repeat on the rear cargo door. We recommend you do not drill all the remaining holes until all of the trim has been installed. At that point you can also countersink the trim if you wish. This will remove the chance of small lumps showing over the screw heads in the plastic infill. This happens particularly on very hot days. Thank you.
You are now ready to fit the short side panel trim. To simplify choice and hopefully eradicate the wrong kit being sent to our customers, we supply a hybrid kit that is designed to fit a 1954 to 1964 small rear door bus or a 65 to 67 large rear door bus. If you have a 54 to 64 small back door, our trim should not require shortening, but the door trim will. If you have a 65 to 67 large back door, you have to shorten the two side trims, but not the back door. We have pressed a curve, making it easy to fit around the compound curve of the rear corners. This curve must always point upwards. To fit the short side trim, measure and mark the location relative to the cargo door trims. Leave a 2mm gap from the door edge for an end cap. Drill and secure the trim. Measure and mark the trim just before the vertical seam between the side and rear corner panels. Secure with a screw. Put a third screw midway between the two you have just fitted for added support. You are now ready to bend the curve around the rear corner. Gently apply pressure and slowly work the trim around the corner. 
it is possible to apply a small pressure up or down as you go around the corner. You can also twist it as you are laying the trim on a compound curve. We recommend that you observe the top of the trim as you progress around the corner as that's the point your eye is drawn to so you need to get it parallel to the body moulding. You may want to put a holding screw in halfway around the corner as you go to help hold it while you work it into shape. When you have the trim secured, 64 to 67 bus owners with a large rear back door will need to cut off the trim overhang. Using a square and a scriber, mark a cut line on the trim. Allow the two millimeters required for an end cap. Remove the trim and mask up the section that's going to get cut off. Place the masked excess end in a vise. Carefully cut with an 18 TPI bladed hacksaw. File the cut end and clean and remove any sharp edges on the back face as it could scratch your paint. Replace back on the bus. Next, go to the front of the vehicle and do the remaining front door and repeat as previous. You can now repeat the process on the long side panel, remembering to allow the two millimeters at each end for both end caps. It is important that both the left and the right side trims are positioned symmetrically as the rear door trim will not run parallel to the body moulding if there is a discrepancy. Fit the rear door trim and remember to allow 2mm for, for the end caps at each end. With all your trim fitted you can now drill every hole. 
You can also countersink the holes if you so wish. Use an 8mm countersink bit only. Do not use a larger one. Do not insert the screws in every hole. Wait until the bus is painted. We supply zinc plated steel screws as stainless screws are cheesy and will only stand one insertion. They also snap easily or strip their threads and create bimetal corrosion, so don't use them. Hope that helped you guys. Exactly the same all the way up and at the top, so they are symmetrical. We take a lot of care to do that. Okay, so we've got a symmetrical pair, taking them apart, and we'll do one at a time. So, there's two things to be concerned about. One is that fit there particularly on the top and the other is this line, the straight line must be on the straight line on the other front. You've got to get that on that line. Okay. Right. Now look at me. Right. These are flat. We've curved them this way, but we haven't curved them that way. 
Now we're going to make this fit that car. And the way to do it is quite easy, gently, you're getting all of this in, all of it, is to run that over your knee. Turn this, twist it that way, like bringing in foul. trim is on the line. Got it. And that it's level with the top of the hinge at the top. And if you look at down the top side of this where it's on against the panel, you'll see that there's no real gap or anything. I've got it pretty well close before we do anything. So that is now able to be attached. Just give it a bit more of a twist.
Got this one in real time, haven't we? You've seen it all from the beginning. Mm -hmm. 